up, people? I'm Shaggy, the opinionated hippie in a Texas that is currently cold enough for me to be wearing a beanie. It's like 50 degrees at lunch today. It's too cold for this California blood. Um, but anyways, um, this is part 14 in my, what I hope is a never-ending series of reviews and rankings of the Dave's Picks from Grateful Dead. I'm going to talk about volume 14. I'm going in order from one all the way up to 44 was just released. By the time I get to 44, we'll probably be on like 48, right? Um, but anyways, maybe not that far. Um, they release one every three months. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, I'm going to talk about 14 because I've already talked about the other 13. When I'm done talking, I will put up the cumulative list to show you where this ranks according to the other 13. And then as we add them, the list expands. Um, this is an absolutely fascinating release. Three CDs with a bonus disc. It is the complete show from March 26, 1972. Uh, I think the fifth of a series of shows, seven shows that they did at the Academy of Music in New York City back in March of 72. We've already seen material from this released on uh, Dick's, Picks, Dick's Picks Volume 30. There was material from March 25th, March 28th. Um, this ranked 20 out of 36, um, though I do think the first disc in this with, has Bo Diddley on it. It's fantastic. Um, and then this now gives us the complete show from the 26 with material from the bonus discs, has a little bit of material from the 27th and also material from the 21st, which I believe is the first show. So um, yeah, it's interesting that we have all of these, this material sort of sprawled out over these releases. Um, I think some of it was also used on Rocking the Rhine as bonus material, um, which is weird since that was a Germany show. Um, but anyways, yeah. Um, interesting that this wasn't a complete box set because I do think that maybe like there could be an Academy of Music box set if, all, if we have all the complete shows, maybe we don't. Um, but anyways, this is a fascinating release because as a deadhead, who is listening to way too much dead in my life and more so recently. Um, this is not a show I would recommend for a beginner, though it does have some absolutely amazing peaks. Um, but I think the more you are in the rabbit hole of the dead, the more this show you appreciate because it has moments of absolute perfection. Um, but it also, and those moments of absolute perfection are moments that I would describe almost as those moments when the music is playing the band to take a lyric from the music never stopped where it almost feels like there is this momentum that is pushing the band and they have no choice but just to keep jamming and like like they have to because the the energy is still going and they have to find a way to like match that energy um and there were a number of moments in this entire show in both the first set and the second set where it really feels like the idea of what the dead are creating is bigger than the dead and they have no choice but to like go with it. And then there are other moments, particularly in the second set, and I'm going to use the surfing analogy, and I've used a lot of surfing analogies um, for the dead, where it, there's like, there's a lot of waves they think they're going to be able to catch and ride, but almost all of these waves like break too early or just turn out not to be the monsters they were hoping. So they have to like turn around and pedal back out and hope to catch another one. And there were moments throughout the second set where we get like four or five minute stretches, sometimes longer, where it's like, oh, let's try this wave. Nah, it didn't work. Let's try this wave. Nah, it didn't work. Let's try this wave. Nah, it didn't work. Okay, let's just go into another song. Um, and as someone who's just been obviously listened to 13 complete shows and bonus discs, disc over the last 13 weeks, 14 with this one, plus all the other dead I just randomly listened to, um, I really enjoy the sort of like the failed attempts to get something going because this era, particularly early 1972, is when they're really starting down that sort of yellow brick road of like awesomeness, where like for me, 74 is like they arrive at Oz and there is no man behind the Oz because Oz is musical improvisational perfection. And so they were able to like, in the course of their journey from 72, 73, 74, like figure things out. So by the time they hit 74, they could just be perfect. Um, and so there's mistakes being made or chances being taken that don't pay off 
but they're fascinating. Um, and it is really interesting to see as we get to the second set, particularly like this latter half of Truckin. Um, I think also the other one has this to some degree, um, maybe even a little bit of the not fade away going down the road feeling bad, where you feel like, no, we can get it, we can get it, oh, it falls apart. Oh, there's another idea, we can get it, oh, it falls apart. But again, those failures, I think, are fascinating. And so that's why if you're new to the dead, I'm gonna rank this, I'll, I'll put the rankings up at the end. Uh, it's gonna be pretty high, because I absolutely love this release, but, I think if you're new to the dead, you might not have the same appreciation, but if you're, you, you're already been there and you're down that rabbit hole, I think there's a lot to like in this. So anyways, the entire first disc is the majority of the first set minus one song, which continues on disc two, um, opens up with the greatest story ever told right off the bat. The ending jam on this is one of those, you're like, oh, it's about to end, but no, they can't end it because the momentum is literally requiring them to keep jamming. Um, there's a couple points where you think they're gonna reach the peak and Keith comes in with some really nice piano playing that again, pushes it a little bit further. Um, and so this is a really standout show for Keith on piano, I think. He's not, there are times it seems like he's not there at all, but then there are key moments when he drops in and you're just like, oh, oh, Keith, yeah, perfect. Um, this is a show that is Keith and Pigpen. We've got a lot of good Pigpen songs in here. Um, so after the opening greatest story ever told, like the energy is incredible. This energy would be sustained throughout the entire show. Um, this is an era of the dead when I think they're just excited to be the Grateful Dead. They have a whole new batch of songs. Their jamming is going in new directions. You can feel their excitement in just being able to play. Um, and the crowd is great. Um, so anyways, greatest story never told. Hits off the show amazingly. We get a cold rain and snow, favorite of mine. Really nice Chinatown shuffle, a pig pen song. Black Throated Wind, a You Win Again, a Mr. Charlie, um, a really good Jack Straw, Loser, I can take a loser in every show and be happy. Looks Like Rain, Big Railroad Blues, another one of those songs that you can put that on every release. I would never get sick of it. A Big Boss Man. And then probably for me, the highlight uh, of the first set is the playing in the band. 12 minute playing in the band. We're not getting into epic, epic jams, but the energy in this and the way they just like push it and push it and it intensifies and they push it, it's just, it's just perfect. Like the first, it's what, 12 minutes? So you're talking maybe like a six minutes, seven, maybe six minutes worth of jamming, right? The first three minutes, maybe four minutes is pretty straightforward playing in the band. Like, what are we doing here? Let's just explore ideas. But then at one point, it's just like they crank it up and Jerry just notches it up. And it just, some of the phrasing and some of the ideas are so intense and so just out there and the band is like almost feels like Jerry lights this fire and they're all like scrambling to keep up with it but they manage to keep up with it and they ride this for not long but long enough to be completely satisfying but not long enough to like make you go I don't need any more like you want more but it's just it's one of those I will take a 45 minute playing in the band over every other playing in the band that's my favorite playing in the band is that 74 45 minute one um if you're going to give me a 12 minute one, this is how you do it. It's just, there is so much intensity in this and it's such a different beast because it's shorter, but what they manage to accomplish in that 12 minutes is just perfect. Um, just great energy. Then they go back down and we get an El Paso and then we get a good loving on disc two to close the second set. Not my favorite song. It's 17 minutes of good loving. I don't like the song. Have to admit, this is a pretty decent version of it. Um, I like this song better, just like I like Love Light better closing the first set because you know that there's gonna be an entire second set or there's gonna be more music and it's not the end of the show. I think it's an end of the show thing. It's kind of disappointing, but it's a pretty good, good love and it's got some great jamming and it's some good energy. Um, Pig Ben's doing a good job. Uh, but that's the end of the second, of the first set. A great first set. Second set starts off with trucking. And like, here's the difference between this show and one of the reasons why I would like to see a box set of this entire thing or why I just need to make some kind of playlist in which I sequence these or I just need to listen to them, what I have in order. Um, but uh, there's a trucking that opens up the second set. It's like an 18 minute trucking and then it goes into drums. The bonus disc has a trucking from March 21st that also goes into drums. That trucking is 11 minutes long. This trucking is 18 minutes long. 
both of them, like as far as like the trucking and the immediate post trucking jam are ridiculous. It's clearly the energy is carrying them. Jerry is pushing it. Trucking almost seems like they're building it to that truck and peak and then they just let a little tension out so they can build it again and then they let a little tension out simply so they can build it again and then they let a little tension out simply so they can build it again, right? And then eventually you peak and it goes into drums. Um, that's the, the bonus disc one. The one from the main disc set has that peak, peak, build, peak, kind of go back into some closing reprise lyrics. And then there's about five or six minutes when it's nothing but them trying to like catch a wave, but they aren't able to catch a single wave. Or they're like trying to light a fire and they got all the flint they need and like all the ingredients are there. And look, we got a little bit of flame, but then it immediately goes out and they have to start over again. And it's almost like five minutes of like wasted space because they literally at no point seem to make progress. They get a little bit of momentum and then it just crumbles. A little bit of momentum and then it just crumbles. And it's a, it's like they're building a, a card of card of towers, no, a house of cards. And they get like the third floor and every time they do, it just crumbles. Um, and so as a sort of successful trucking, like you would never put this trucking out on like, we're only gonna release one album of 1972 material, let's put this trucking on there. You're not gonna do that because it really does seem like they're just like, like treading water for like four or five minutes. But I think it's fascinating because here is a band that's like trying to learn how to surf. Let's stick with the surfing analogy. They're learning how to surf. And maybe there are waves here they could have caught, but they didn't recognize it at the time. They didn't know this is what you were going to take. This is, you know, they were like kept backing out and like going back for something that was a little more obvious. And it's just, it's a fascinating uh, set five or six minutes. That goes into drums. That goes into the other one. And the other one, 24 minutes of the other one, it's almost the exact same thing. Really good other one. And anytime they're sort of in the other one pocket, which they go in and out of, where everybody's just like, doon, 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 where they had the drums, the bass, everybody's locked into that groove. It's one of those things where like, they found the wave and they're riding it and they're they're perfect. Like they're doing everything you want to do on a surfboard. You know, they're even getting a little cocky, a little flashy, maybe even doing like, maybe they're even lying down for a while or maybe they're doing a somersault on it. They're, they're like really fancy on that surfboard. But then when they abandon that like main dude or that main drive, again, it's like, experimental time where it's not working. They're not able to get those ideas together where everybody's on the same page and they go forward. And so it's this fascinating, even more fascinating than trucking because trucking is just like, we try, we fail, we try, we fail, we try, we fail. Let's go into drums. This is like other one. Let's try something new. Ah, it didn't work. Try something new. Hey, go back into the other one for a little while. Oh yeah, we got our energy back. Let's try something new. Ah, that didn't work. Let's try something new. Okay, let's hit the first first. Okay, let's go a little spacey. Oh, let's try to build something. Ah, that didn't work. Let's go back into the other one. And it's a really just like a band willing to take its time, willing to explore, willing to experiment. It doesn't always work, but it's a really entertaining ride. And the best part about 24 minutes into it, 23 minutes and 30, 23 minutes into it, it's just not working. They're trying to catch fire with a little more of a, almost feels like they might go into something like a feeling good, feeling groovy jam, or maybe even like a beautiful jam or something kind of different, right? And they drop into a me and my uncle instead. And that intro, when they first do the me and my uncle, one of my favorite things in there, me and my uncle finishes, they go back into the other one, they finish it pretty strong. Um, and that's the end of disc two. Disc three is the remainder of the show. We get a really good Wharf Rat, um, um, a Sugar Magnolia, nice combination. Uh, we get a Stranger, Two Souls in Communion, my favorite pig pen song. I like the lyrics, I like the performance, I like sort of the low key, kind of reflective nature of it. Um, and then we get a Not Fade Away, Going Down the Road, Feeling Bad, Not Fade Away to close out the show. Um, and so it's, it is one of my, I think, the most fascinating shows. The energy from, from the first song to the last song is just high energy. You can tell the band is having a good time. It is just all around an absolutely like fascinating performance. Like I wouldn't rank it up there as one of their best, but this coupled with that volume 30 from Dave Picks, I think, which also has two absolutely incredible playing in the bands on here um, on this one. Um, 
it's just a really that a box set of all those shows would be such a fascinating just to like just to track the material that they have from the oh and the bonus disc so the first show is right from the 28th the bonus disc has a bunch of stuff from the 27th no the 26th right and then the bonus disc and this is the 26th the bonus disc has stuff from the following night you get a bertha brown eyed women a uh, pretty solid china writer and cumberland blues um, all high energy, well performed, and then you get the bunch of stuff from March twenty first, which is that trucking, which is the shorter, more intense, without the like attempts to jam a drums. Another other one, which is pretty much they stick more in that pocket more often. There are a couple moments where they kind of go out there and experiment, but they're a little more successful because it doesn't feel like they're as far out there as they would be like five days later. And then a, a pretty strong war frat to close. But anyways, yeah. I just think this is an absolutely fascinating, fascinating show. And it's one of those that like, I think you appreciate it more if you know where they were coming from in 70 and 71, where they would go to in 73 and 74. And this seven show run is just from everything I've heard from it, it's just, it's the dead at their most, like they are excited to be there. You can feel that energy. And it just makes for a really, really fun, interesting listen. But yeah, uh, again, love it. And this is why I would rank it. Jump to all the way up to number four, people. Look at that. I like this one. It is good. It is number four. It is a good show. It deserves to be there. I would say those top four are almost like must-haves in the Dave's Pick series. Um, the only two that I think are a little, uh, are those bottom two, which are solid good shows, but I, I don't think those are things I'd recommend to newbies. Um, everything on this list is good to great, but those top four, our winner winners, uh, chicken dinners. So yeah, that's it, man. That's what I got to say. So yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. If you have this disc or have thoughts on this or comments on this disc, or you know how you know how it works. But share, subscribe, like, comment, and most importantly, go listen to music, people. Go listen to all the music, people. Peace and stay warm.